So we're here at uh, Lenora Connect here in San Francisco. And uh, who are you? I'm Kurt Kevel. I work at MIT. I have a number of ARM processor initiatives with the undergraduates at MIT. So uh, I've, I've seen you uh, for a while on the internet, right? We'll be, we've been chatting. You're doing lots of stuff with the with the kind of like the ARM server, ARM uh, clusters. What are you doing with the ARM stuff? So we've we've been ARM centric, especially in the HPC space, for a while at MIT. We started uh, myself and Brian DeLacy started the ARM festival. Uh, we started the um, ARM uh, init. So we would invite long before uh, there was a software ecosystem around ARM. We would invite some ARM employees to come and speak at MIT. And we would have small hackathons, uh, usually with ARM v7 class uh, uh, dev boards and SBCs. Uh, we would do BeagleBone or BeagleBoard hackathons. We would do PandaBoard hackathons. And uh, this be going on for a while? Yes. Yeah, so, so ARM at MIT. We have a we have a group email MIT ARM at MIT.edu, which sends us out to the uh, to the ARM architecture specific interest groups. And it's a, it's a growing community, especially now that they're breaking into these HPC uh, you know, locations. So MIT is, is the place. I mean, everybody, uh, MIT is famous for being a really awesome place for technology stuff, right? For architecture research. So you've got your, uh, your groups that are looking at, uh, at, at various architecture development, um, uh, especially in areas of high throughput computing, Big data, BDEC we call it, big data, extreme computing, HPC. We, ha we have an IEEE conference, HPEC, High Performance Embedded Computing. This is one of the few IEEE conferences at MIT, and they, they look at a number of different um, sub-paths within HPC, uh, vibration-sensitive processing, uh, low power, low weight processing, because it has to go into a plane. This is what, what uh, HPEC looks at. And uh, they're looking at some of the benchmarks. There's the HPC challenge for, for big iron. There's the HPEC challenge for, for embedded computing. So HPC, and there's a, there's a, a Kantar had a speech here. She's a, like doing strategy with the HPC at Linaro. Uh, Linaro is getting into this. Did you, did you get a good feel into what Linaro is doing with this kind of stuff? That's right. So, so in the early days of ARM HPC development, you'd, you'd be looking at a 32-bit processor and trying to do a lot of your uh, floating point work in, in either SIMD extensions, NEON extensions, or maybe trying to find a vector processing unit to take some of this traditionally floating point work that, that, uh, that big iron uh, traditional uh, processing would happen on a, a, a separate processor like a, a x87. Uh, Generation processor or SSE, you can you can move a lot of your floating point operations out to uh, dedicated uh, extensions. So this is happening more and more in the ARM space now with the ARM V8 class processors. We can put some of this processing on on SIMD extensions or or either on die or on package, move it over to um, a GPU or GPU like processing, moving some of the embarrassingly parallel stuff over to an accelerator. Are you building supercomputers? Uh, we're looking at supercomputer support. So, so if we can do something uh, that'll double our throughput or our processing or our quality or our, our precision or our accuracy on a dev board, then that will scale up to supercomputing. And uh, so there's a whole bunch of students in that, that segment? Yes, and so, so we have this academic initiative to teach the undergraduates in particular, grad students to a lesser extent, but undergraduates teach them how to work in this space, and the way you teach them how to work in this space is to give them a real world project, and they move forward. Uh, one of the initiatives we put forward uh, with the undergraduates is the Solar Powered Supercomputing Project. Uh, and this is a, uh, an initiative where we give them ARM Cortex A9 processors, you know, a multi-core processor, uh, run an SMP kernel, uh, tell them that this thing scales linearly and put together a couple of hundred CPUs or a couple of hundred dies, which will then be 400 or 500 CPUs. Tell them to make this energy efficient, run it off of solar power as a proxy for energy efficiency, and then say, okay, this is probably a good quality candidate for high performance computing analysis because it's so energy efficient. Solar powered high HPC. Yeah. So, solar powered supercomputing. Yep. 
And uh, so, uh, what kind of students do you have? Do you have a? Um, uh, it's it's really hard to get into MIT, right? You you got the best students. So uh, in this space, you're looking at uh, undergraduates who are probably majoring in computer science or double E, but also have a strong Mechie background. It turns out with the solar power portion of this. There's a, there's a lot of the mechanical engineering and, and power budget analysis, power engineering, uh, systems engineering that you have to do for the solar portion. And once you deliver that voltage within a tolerance and at a predictable rate, and uh, that's, that's when you can integrate that, that uh, very strong hardware background into a firmware or weak hardware uh, dev board background. So there's a little bit of a, of a space in the middle where they have to figure out the Mechie and the double E. So is MIT is an awesome place and uh, how long have you been there and what were you doing before? So I've been there as either a student or an employee for uh, 20 years um, and uh, my, my day job is mostly to maintain the high perform performance computing in a research lab but we do do outreach to the undergraduate uh, to the main campus students the course six students and uh, we engage them in the student cluster contest. We have them build supercomputers. We have them compete in supercomputers at the IEEE Supercomputing Conference, the International Supercomputing Conference in Frankfurt, uh, the Asian Supercomputing Conference in China, and to uh, a progressively greater extent right there in Cambridge at the High Performance Embedded Computing Conference. And this is, so it's, a, it's kind of a big tent. It's a qualitative and quantitative ask. We get a lot of undergraduates in. We work through a lot of the difficulties with supercomputing issues, and at the end of the day, we put together a team to go to one of these competitions. It's also very related with all the stuff that's going on right now with cloud, cloud computing, uh, the big Google, Amazon web services, all that. Is, has, is that related with the kind of science and knowledge you'll get from building HPC stuff? Yeah, sure. So MIT calls it BDEC, Big Data Extreme Computing. And uh, in what we're discovering, there's a lot more horizons now with some of these, some of the features you can get out of the new architectures where you can do analysis out on the edge and just pass up data that you can then visualize. Uh, so we, we're starting to discover new venues, new research opportunities for people that need either uh, strong compute on the front end and weak communication or the other way around and we find ways to accommodate the compute communication overlap so that we can maximize both. Uh, and uh, so, uh, is there a lot of work done in that field that also uses Intel? Or is that a different department? You, you, you prefer ARM yourself? Well, so Intel, in, Intel's uh, the, so Chipzilla is the incumbent in uh, raw performance. What we look at with ARM processors is, uh, is, is the metric. We call it the numerator and the green denominator. So the green denominator is performance per watt or performance per, per square foot. So if you're looking at retrofitting a data center and you don't want to buy a new data center, you just want to get a Moore's Law doubling of performance in that existing data center, then you're looking at some of these new architectures that are more energy efficient. Uh, it's fun, no, to follow this industry, to check all the, that's why I get some messages from you a little bit, you checking armdevices.net? Oh yeah. To check some of the latest stuff? Yep, yep. What do you think about my videos? So, uh, your videos are very much on target, so uh, there's, there's very much of, a, uh, of an opportunity now for people to find a board or a device or a class of devices that are actually very focused in on their market vertical. We're constantly looking for combinations of boards and processors that have a little bit of CPU, a little bit of DSP. Sometimes we mix and match those combinations, and there's a solution for that within, within the ARM ecosystem. There's a lot of SOCs. Some have, like this is new Socianex with 24 cores, small cores. There's uh, all these uh, companies doing different things. It's, it's cool to kind of like check it out, right? Yep. Yeah, and so, so the boards, or the feature sets we're looking for are very HPC centric. We run a website called opennovation.org. So opennovation.org 
lists all of the high performance computing codes that we have access to and that our students run in the student cluster contest and we've ported them to not only our distros of choice but also our architectures of choice. So our effort now for the rest of this semester is going to be to, to move these into um, an ARM V8 uh, compatible format, probably as a, a .deb or, 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 or tarball as well. And I think Linaro is talking about some new, uh, 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 it's called effort to try to work together with education uh, opportunities, what's called, uh, maybe work more with MIT would be cool, right? If the Linaro is, could, be, could work more yep. with, the, with your students or maybe your students could, I mean, everything is open source, of course, but maybe there's a way to do more and more stuff together. What do you think about these guys in Linaro? That's right, yeah. So we meet, um, our group that's working on this, this board uh, problem it meets every Fridays. We're going to see now that I know about these Thursday night open office hours and these and these weekend visits. We're going to try to engage Lenaro in some broader aspect to see if we can get them in on on some of our meetings and some of our our code development or at least our at least our um, strategic uh, direction finding. So so one of the projects we're looking at now we want to do a board that will provide the city of Cambridge with, uh, with the Things Network, with Laura Wan. And we have a board that we're looking at. We, um, we've talked to a lot of people here from not only the software side, but also the hardware side, the 96 boards folks. And there is a, there is a path to getting a Laura Wan solution. Our site is called uh, ttn.mit.edu, and that stands for the Things Network.mit.edu. And we, we, have a, a, we have a path, at least a strategic and high level uh, uh, direction to go forward to get our, our Things Network um, figured out in Cambridge. And this, this solution, the back end solution, may involve an ARM based board, a 96boards.org board. You might inspire some of your other colleagues at the MIT to check out what Lenaro is doing. There's a whole bunch of other sectors, kind of. There, there's some interesting stuff they're doing with IoT. Are you interested with, in that, or some, maybe some somebody else at the MIT might be interested, right? That's absolutely right. So, so certainly, um, all of these new spaces that have cropped up due to the the way we're putting demands on video streaming services like Netflix, there's an there's a opportunity now for an IoT-centric board or a consumer electronics or an enterprise edition level board. So the, the crowd I work with, they're looking at enterprise edition, um, HPC and up, rather than low power IoT and down. But there's, a, there's some middle ground there too. You know, there's certainly this LoRaWAN network you'll have an extremely low power device on your person, a moderately low power device in the infrastructure, and it will all feed up where the, the big data aggregates at the, uh, at the enterprise level, um, probably an ARM V8 cluster, a cloud level cluster. So how long have you been working with the ARM stuff? So we looked at, uh, I think we started putting HPC analysis clusters. Now these weren't production clusters, they were, they were clusters to find where we can put HPC in on a 32-bit ARM processor, ARM v7 level clusters. So that would have been five years ago, I think. And, uh, and we went through the, the various levels, the 32-bit um, the ARM v8, or ARM v7, uh, ARM Cortex-A8, ARM Cortex-A9, multi-core, SMP kernels, things progressing very, very much along a Moore's Law path. ARM Cortex-A15, we got quad core out of that and then eventually progressing to 64-bit ARM cores, which is where we're at now. Wouldn't it be fun if ARM totally won the war against Intel and, and that, that would validate so much what you're doing, right? And suddenly, I mean, okay, maybe not won the war, but let's say that some of these ARM solutions really turn out to be very, very popular or very, very validated in the market. Yeah. That, then it makes it even more and more relevant to work with. So I'm really shocked at, at how quickly that progress has been moving. So the uh, uh, being able to put uh, large uh, processor counts in, in, an, in an individual die, even even if you're sharing an L1, L1 cache, some, so some of these some of these ARM Cortex A5748 core dies are are in pairs and they're and they're. And the only real downside is that they're sharing a cache. They're not sharing vector floating point units or anything else. It's uh, there's a lot of ways to maximize. We've got enough multi-processor tools, uh, OpenMP tools, to be able to maximize that kind of uh, architecture. 
cool. Uh, so I hope these guys at Linaro are going to be able to uh, to to uh, create a, a stable platform that everybody can work on, yep. open source, and that the ARM ecosystem comes with some chips that take over the world. Right. But make right. Uh, make things possible. So because otherwise, if it consumes too much power, there's no way we can all have this luxury of having smart smartphones and stuff. Yeah. So if you if you want to stay uh, up on our solar powered supercomputing project. We have a tiny URL, tinyurl.com slash Cape Cod SPS. Uh, I'll, I'll put that link. Yeah, on, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put SPS it in the Cape description. Cod. Yep. People can check it out. And then, uh, and then my website, ttn.mit.edu, but um, uh, and then openovation.org. We're going to maintain. Certainly, by the next time we get together at, at an HPC our meetup will be uh, in November in, at SC17 uh, in Denver, and we'll have, we'll have all of the HPC codes up to date by then. 